Hey everyone, it's Jason Dunn here from Digital Home Thoughts, and this is my long overdue review video of the Nikon D3100 Digital SLR. So I did my unboxing video, uh, I guess it would have been a couple of months ago, and I got a lot of really interesting comments. I've spent a lot of time interacting with uh, you guys that watch that video and answering questions. And there's been a lot of people that have been saying, where is the review video? So without further ado, here's my review video. I'm not going to talk about specs or, you know, features really in this review. If you want to talk about what the camera is, you know, kind of capable of, feel free to check out my unboxing video. This video is really more about what I feel uh, using the camera, you know, for the past uh, few months that I have owned it. So, one of the things uh, that I've really liked about this camera is just how physically small it is. Um, initially, I was a little bit unsure, you know, about about the size in terms of, uh, you know, kind of gripping it. But I've I found that, you know, if, if I grip it like this, basically, and I have my finger on the shutter, the pinky can kind of just barely fit. Um, you know, for me, I would have maybe preferred it if it were just just a touch bigger, but I mean, certainly I think for the majority of people that are buying uh, these styles of camera, you know, a nice small digital SLR will go a long way. So I definitely can't fault Nikon for that. Um, in terms of, I guess, performance, um, the screen is good, but not great. So one of the things, one of the th things that people have asked, actually, I guess I should, I should snap a picture here so I can actually show you uh, the screen. Um, Oh boy, here I am. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time taking a picture. All right, I gotta go off camera to snap a photo. Oh, well, here we go. That's a, that's a great demo, Jason. Uh, it was in self timer mode, so that's why it wasn't actually taking the picture. So, all right, there we go. I've now taken the picture. So let's talk about the screen for a second. Um, I'll have to double check, but the screen resolution, I want to say it's like 230K dots, meaning 230,000 um, pixels. What does that mean? Well, that basically means that the detail level is, it's okay, it's not great. Uh, when I compare the screen to the screen on my Nikon D300, it's not very good, but the reality is in the Nikon D300, when I purchased it, it was probably around uh, three to four times as much money uh, just for the camera body. So that's one thing to kind of be aware of. The screen is good, but not great. The real question you have to ask yourself about the screen is, are you going to be editing your pictures on the screen? Are you going to be, you know, zooming in and checking if pictures are sharp and things like that on the screen? Or are you going to wait and do that on your computer? The screen is certainly capable of zooming in, you know, on a picture and, and checking for sharpness. As you can see here, I'm able to, you know, check it out really easily. Uh, but you pretty much do need to zoom in to check out sharpness. Uh, this screen compared to my, my bigger camera, there's really no comparison. But again, this is a sort of starter digital SLR. So that's all I'll say about the screen. Now, let's talk about video quality for a second here. I'm going to put up a link right now on the screen that will link to a 1080p sample video I took at the Calgary Zoo. It is of a camel. Uh, I was using this particular camera. I believe I had my 18 to 200 millimeter lens on it, so it's a little bit bigger. And yeah, you can check out the sample for yourself. You can see um, the quality I think is is great. It's, it's contrasty. It looks really cool. But you can, of course, hear the uh, camera lens um, doing its autofocus. So that's that's one issue with all digital SLRs. On camera audio is, is not gonna be great. Uh, if you're doing any kind of serious uh, project or you know a video or whatever you're doing, you pretty much want to get external audio into the camera. And that's one of the things that the D3100 is not particularly good at. Uh, unless I'm wrong, and someone can feel free to point out if I am, there's no way to get external audio uh, into this camera. External audio as in a microphone that you would plug into the camera to get off camera audio, that comes in at the uh, D7000 range and kind of above. So uh, if you're looking for a camera that's great at doing video uh, with external microphones, this is not your camera. Again, this is a intro level digital SLR with 1080p video function that is quite good, but it is you know still kind of limited uh, at this particular price point. Another way that this camera is limited, and it's just something to kind of be aware of, is in terms of what types of lenses it can use. So this is the very popular uh, 50 millimeter uh, f1.8. It's a it's a really popular prime lens. 
It has been around for a long time, and one of the reasons it's popular is because it's an F18, so it's really fast, but it is also uh, really cheap. I think you can get this, you know, for under $200 most of the time. But here's the thing, it actually doesn't have an, an internal focusing motor. It relies upon the camera body to do that focusing. This lens on the D3100 is actually not capable of auto focusing because the D3100 does not have that focusing uh, motor, the mechanism in it. So if you're interested in using older lenses, you know, lenses that don't have built-in autofocus motors in them, you do not want to use the D3100. Uh, if you're going to use the D3100, you're pretty much going to need to purchase uh, newer lenses that are compatible with that particular camera. So I'm just, I'll set that aside for right now, but I wanted to kind of get that out of the way. In terms of the camera's performance, uh, in terms of you know, uh, noise performance and uh, quality of uh, you know images and things like that. Uh, I feel like it is quite good. It's not excellent. Um, it is light years beyond anything in the point and shoot realm. I mean, I would gladly take you know this camera um, over anything else in terms of low noise. Even over my Panasonic GF1, this thing is still better at high ISOs than the Panasonic GF1 is. I haven't honestly done any any hardcore comparisons between this camera and say my D300. The D300, um, you know, has been out for longer and so a lot of the sensor technology from those older high-end cameras have trickled down to these particular cameras. And of course, this camera also has a, a different sensor in it. And so in terms of uh, high ISO performance, I would rate this camera as being quite good, but it is going to be, you know, it, it's, it's at its price point, it is excellent, but it is not going to measure up to, say, the Nikon D7000 or whatever. So something to kind of be aware of. Now, uh, another, another thing, uh, you know, to kind of just be aware of, I guess, is the, uh, the, the burst performance, right? So the, that is um, the burst performance uh, of the camera, and it looks like I shot probably somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, maybe 14 frames there. So that's that's pretty much as fast as it goes. So um, how fast is that? Is that going to be good enough for your needs as a photographer? Really depends. Um, I found you know if I'm shooting pictures um, of my son or I'm kind of out and about, the burst mode is is just fine. If I was shooting sports, uh, probably not. I would I would haul out my D300 because I would want to have the the the, the faster, um, higher performance. Um, in terms of kind of overall functionality, um, there there are definitely times that that I miss having a front dial here. You know, the fact that there's only one rear dial, I you know I occasionally miss it. But you know, if you're uh, if you're just starting out with and this is your first digital SLR, I, I don't think it's really necessary to move up to a camera body that has you know two dials. I think this is a really good camera uh, for learning photography. It does have some of those those guide modes, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be totally honest. Uh, when I when I went to the uh, when I, the guide mode, I literally have not been into this guide mode uh, since I first shot my unboxing video. Uh, I guess I've been doing you know photography for a little while now. I feel like I'm a decent photographer, so uh, the guide mode is is frankly nothing that I've I've been in at all. But I think if you're a beginner photographer, the guide mode can be really helpful uh, in terms of figuring out. Um, what you what, how to work the camera uh, essentially it has all the manual modes that you'd pretty much ever need you know aperture priority uh, full manual you know shutter speed shutter speed priority uh, full auto and then of course it has these other modes in here um, I feel like uh, this camera one of the things it doesn't have however is uh, the automatic um, bracketing um, and the way uh, what you would typically do with with automatic bracketing is you would you would um, uh, bump up this the uh, the exposure plus one zero and then minus one and really bracketing is I honestly think really most important if you're doing HDR images um, for the cameras right now are really really great at metering a scene in terms of getting the evaluation like the the exposure correct some people bracket all the time I typically only bracket if I decide I, I kind of want to do an HDR image or maybe if it's a really tricky scene then I'll go ahead and do the bracketing now this camera does not have you know automatic uh, built-in bracketing I'm about 99% sure that it doesn't have it, even if you set it to, uh, you you know, like a manual mode. That's probably going to be something that I should, frankly, I should have researched before I started doing this video. But suffice it to say, because um, it doesn't have built-in bracketing in terms of like having a a, a, de a dedicated um, button, um, it's 
I never use it, right? So I never really go looking for it. Now there is the exposure compensation button. If you press and hold here, and then you rotate this dial, you can see that I can manually bump up the exposure or you know bump down the exposure, uh, but that is not the same as bracketing. So if you want bracketing, you're pretty much gonna wanna look at, I believe the D5000 has it, and the D7000 of course uh, definitely has it. So, um, what do I think about this camera, you know, just kind of in general? Um, I think that this camera is great for beginners. I think it is a great camera to learn um, how to shoot with the digital SLR. I think uh, the kit lens you get, the 18 to 55, this is not that lens. This is a 35 millimeter um, F1.8. The kit lens is decent. It's certainly great for starting out. My first advice would be to go out and buy a prime. Uh, this lens here, this 35 millimeter prime lens, is a fantastic lens. It's really sharp. Uh, it's really fast. It's great for low lighting. So I definitely would recommend a prime lens as being your secondary lens. And yeah, so that's basically my review. Um, if you guys have any questions about the kinds of things uh, that maybe I didn't cover, if, if you're curious about certain things, I mean, there's there, there's things that I've taught, you know, that I didn't actually talk about. Like, for example, you know, um, if I if I go back in here into, um, you know, uh, the picture mode, sorry, let me go back in here in play mode. So I have a picture, I press OK. There's all these different things like I can do, you know, fisheye perspective, distortion control, straighten. Um, one of actually, one of the really neat ones is, is this, uh, this miniature effect. Um, it's basically a tilt shift effect. It's probably not going to look very good on, on, on this particular image. But yeah, basically, as you can see, it has blurred the top and the bottom, and then this is in focus. That's not a good, um, this isn't a good picture to demonstrate it on. So this is just me. A lot of these things, frankly, uh, I think are better done on a computer. So if you're into doing this kind of stuff, like maybe you wanna do a color outline and you wanna do some fun stuff on your camera, uh, the Nikon can definitely do some fun stuff. So this is called the outline. Um, the Nikon's capable of doing it, but I personally don't think that that's a really great selling feature. Um, what really matters to me, honestly, are the quality of the images that the sensor puts out, the quality of the video that it puts out. For the price point, the Nikon D300, I think delivers in spades. So, you wanna know how much it is? Don't even ask, check my video link. I'll put up a link to um, this particular camera up on Amazon. If you purchase this camera through that link, you help me out, you help me to make these more, uh, make more of these videos. Um, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the ads that you see around this video, that also helps me out. Uh, if you wanna subscribe to our channel, please feel free to do so. Post questions, give the video a thumbs up, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video.